Hey everybody, it's Nate and Steph from Explorers.life. We teach people how to build DIY campers. And this video is episode number nine in a series of videos where we are showing you step-by-step step from the ground up how we're upfitting our brand new Ford Transit into a DIY camper van. In last week's video, we took a few days and masked off the entire van and sprayed a couple of coats of lizard skin sound control, sound deadening, to make our van a bit quieter driving down the road. And in this video, we're going to do some before and after testing of the lizard skin so that you can hopefully see some performance differences resulting from this project. So let's get started. For this video, we have done three different tests. The first test was an in-vehicle driving test. So before we sprayed, we took a little drive and recorded some audio to see how loud the van was while driving and how it sounded while speaking in a normal talking voice. And here's how it sounded. So just trying to compare what a normal speaking voice sounds like uh, we're cruising down the road right now, about 70 miles an hour. Uh, this is with no sound deadening on. I feel like I'm talking just a, loud, a little bit louder than I normally would be if I was just carrying on a normal conversation. But this is what it sounds like with no sound deadening in the back of the van. And we'll check back after we get it all put on to see what it sounds like. So this is the after test. Um, we've got. 12 gallons of uh, lizard skin sound control on in the back. Uh, we're cruising at 70 miles an hour. The microphone and audio is set up to the exact same as it was before. Um, yeah, and so just, I think I'm talking just a little bit louder than I would if I was in like a dead quiet room. It's not silent in here, obviously. I don't think anybody expected it to be. But just from listening to it, uh, not having it back to back, uh, definitely seems a lot quieter and I'm pretty happy with uh, with how well it did because I know the headliner metal was particularly loud. So this is what it sounds like at 70 mile an hour with the lizard skin sound controls had sound deadening in the back. So the next test that we're wanting to do was we wanted to see how noise or music on the outside of the van uh, kind of translated to how it sounded on the inside of the van. So. We've got a phone set up right here with some music ready to go. And then we're going to move the camera inside the van once we get this music playing and to see how it sounds with sound deadening and without sound deadening. Uh, not really sure if it's gonna make much of a difference. I don't think it will, but that's why we're testing. So we're gonna get the music started and move the camera inside. So now we're going to do the after uh, audio test or music test, the same as we did. Uh, we have these back doors taped shut for masking purposes. Um, so I'm going to start the music and then I'm gonna go out the front doors, set this over on the uh, work table in the exact same spot and see if we can tell the difference. <laughs> So we just listened to the audio test up on the computer and uh, you just listened to it on the video. And unless you were listening through headphones, you may not have been able to hear a difference, which that's pretty much the conclusion that we came to as well. Uh, we couldn't hear a big difference between the before and after with the music sitting on the work table over there. Um, and that's pretty representative of what is um, what we actually heard. It was pretty quiet uh, before, you know, you have a phone outside and then you're inside the van. Uh, but it was just as quiet afterwards as well. So I think that's a pretty inconclusive test. Uh, we saw that maybe it doesn't really even matter for kind of soundproofing, if you will, uh, the van. So now that test is out of the way, we are going to go back into the van and do the tap test uh, before and afters. 
So now that we have two of our three uh, bass lines set uh, for how this van sounds without sound deadening, we did the driving test, we did the kind of music inside versus outside test, and now we're just going to do like a tapping on the panels test to see how like kind of the resonance of the panel sounds now versus whenever we install the sound deadening afterwards. And so what we're testing here is I'm just going to go around the van in a few spots and tap on it, just like that. And we're going to keep the camera uh, three feet away from the panel. And we're just going to be listening to the different, uh, like how long the panel rings after I tap on it. So similar with like, I don't know if we have any uh, former band nerds in the crowd, but if, uh, if you have like a bass drum and you tap on it and then you add mass to it with your hand, that resonance stops a lot faster. And that's really what we're doing here because as we try it, as we cruise down the road, the wind is shaking these panels just a little bit and causing some of that resonant frequencies and it's just going to make it louder in here. That's kind of the, the theory, the hypothesis, um, but we're going to be uh, tapping on this and we're going to get you those bass lines and then after we get that done, uh, we're going to spray um, the lizard skin on and then we're going to jump to the results and we're going to do some of these tests again. So let's get started. So we finished up spraying two coats of the lizard skin uh, sound control, sound deadening. Uh, so two coats at approximately 40 mils, which is 40 thousandths of an inch. And whenever you spray that onto that thickness, it adds about a half a pound of mass uh, per square foot to the body panels, which half a pound of mass per square foot is about the same as the 80 mil um, like kill mat um, uh, sound deadening, uh, this peel and stick stuff. So that's what we've done. Now we're going to do the tap test, exact same as before. Uh, I'm going to tap on the exact same three spots around the van, just like before. Same audio levels. Um, we are not editing anything in camera as far as the audio goes at this particular part. So what you're hearing now, me speaking, as well as uh, the tapping that you're about to hear, uh, it's going to be all unedited uh, so that we're able to keep it as consistent as possible. So, here we go. So now that the project is all wrapped up and we've had a chance to drive it around a little bit and some stuff like that, what do you think? Do you think it actually made a difference? Yeah, I mean, it definitely made a difference. Um, there's definitely a difference in the, the sound between um, before when we had nothing on it and now. So there's obviously some, some mass added, which is going to help. Um, so yeah, there's, there's definitely a difference. What do you think? Uh, I thought so as well. And I, you know, after listening to the before afters on the video that we took, uh, I wish that the differences came through a little bit more on camera. It's just so hard to sometimes capture what you hear in real life versus you hear on the other side of the internet, the other side of the computer. Um, I think the biggest difference was when we were driving down the road, it was significantly easier to talk to each other mm -hmm. uh, after the sound deadening than it was before the sound deadening. On video, I just think I just feel like it almost changed the note of <laughs> the sound uh, from the outside, for lack of a better word. But it didn't seem like it was quieter on video. But real life, it was definitely quieter. So that was kind of my thoughts on if it actually made a difference. Okay. So we got some questions in last week's video, and I just kind of want to talk about them. Uh, so one of them is the cost. Uh, of the lizard skin versus a peel and stick like Dynamat or Killmat or something like that. So you looked at the costs. What did you find out about those? 
Yeah, so the kill mat is definitely less expensive um, at about $1.75 per square foot um, versus the lizard skin is about $2.03 per square foot if you're getting a, a coverage of 90 square feet per two gallon bucket. Um, in addition to the cost of the product itself, with the lizard skin, you will need to have the spray gun. Um, you'll need to um, have a have an air compressor that is large enough to um, to do the job. And then the the other thing with the um, lizard skin versus the kill mat is all of the prep work. So you're going to have to have all of that painter's tape, the the uh, the masking paper. Um, the Tyvek suit, all of that, the respirator. Um, so all of that adds up with cost. Um, so, I mean, the end, at the end of the day, definitely lizard skin is more expensive per square foot. Yep, definitely. Um, the other question we had was weight uh, versus a peel and stick. So the weight's gonna be the same. Uh, per square foot, the weight's gonna be the same. So kill mat, uh, 80 mil is, um, a half a pound per square foot, and lizard skin, when applied to the manufacturer's recommendation of 40 mils, is also a half pound per square foot. So per square foot, it's the exact same weight. You know, we sprayed about 12, we sprayed 12 gallons um, of product in this van, and so we estimate it, um, we got about 100 extra pounds of mass, which mm -hmm. is kind of the point, like it's, it's not a negative, you know, we have to add weight to that's kind of the whole point of adding mass to uh, decrease the uh, the sound uh, the sound resonance from the outside. Um, but as far as like comparing one to the other on a per square foot basis, uh, that's the difference. Now, um, a lot of people don't don't do 100% coverage when using lizard skin or something like that. Um, so if you're oh yeah, when using kill mat, sorry, yeah, they don't go for 100% coverage, which if you're only going for 20% coverage, it's gonna be even less weight. So you kind of have to ask yourself, you know, how much coverage is going to work for you and in what spots and all that kind of stuff. So, that, But then the answer gets kind of complicated there. Yeah, absolutely. So the next thing was um, application time. So um, about how, mu how, how much time did it take uh, to apply the lizard skin versus um, the kill mat, which we have done before? Yeah, so we've done both of them before. Um, the actually applying the lizard skin took way less time. Um, it was about, I think, maybe two and a half hours per coat. Um, so, you know, five hours for the entire thing. Uh, but there's drying time and there's curing time in between those and... The masking time. The, uh, the, the prep work took a long time. Um, that definitely was, was the longest piece of, of this whole process. Um, and there will be additional time um, to remove all of that masking. Yep. So, okay. um, the other questions we had, what we got here, application time, overall thoughts, I suppose. Yeah. So what are your overall thoughts about the, uh, the product, the, um, the application, and everything in general? Yeah. So overall thoughts. Um, I think it, uh, the Lizard Skin is a great product. Um, I'm really happy that we were able to get full coverage on this van. Um, that makes me feel a lot better going forward about the, the, the fact that just every surface is covered for sure. Um, there's no bare metal in the back of the van. Um, obviously in the front of the van, there's, that's a little bit different, but in the back of the van, there is no bare metal that we're gonna have to be worrying about. Um, so that's definitely a, a huge plus. Um, that being said, I think that if, if I were weighing the cost, um, the cost benefit of this, um, this product versus Kilmat, I personally would probably choose Kilmat, um, one, because it's less ex expensive, but more so just because it's less complicated to install. Um, the, the time commitment of having to really commit to this project and once you are, once you get started on it, you said, you know, two and a half hours of spray time. Um, that's a long time to be really committed to a project and for me personally, I would like I would prefer the the ability to put in a little bit of the the kill mat, you know, go and work on another project. Um, I don't really have the attention span to, to spend two and a half hours on one project. So that's me personally. What about you? Uh, so wrote down my list here. So got some pros and some cons about the whole project. So 
I think one thing I do like you touched on a few times was the ability to really spray that stuff in all of the nooks and crannies. Like there was a few spots that, you know, as I was doing the process, I was going around and like tapping on various surfaces to see how resonant they were. And in some of the spots I was able to like spray some of the, the lizard skin up into some of the body support ribs. And maybe that makes a difference, you know, maybe it doesn't, but ultimately it's one of those things to, it's nice to get full coverage and have the ability to. With something like Kill Mat or a pill and stick, you know, there's no option to even do that in some of the spots I was trying to spray uh, the lizard skin in some of those little nooks and crannies. So the next thing was kind of a pro and a con all at the same time, the bigger compressor. So Stephanie said that that was a con. Uh, but I think it's a pro because I wanted a bigger compressor. <laughs> um, so I wanted the ability to, in the future, um, you know, run an HVLP gun or run air tools or fill up our tires in our, uh, in, in our car or our van faster. And the little pancake compressor that we have just wasn't going to cut it. So if you need a new compressor and you need a reason and a justification to get a new compressor, then you should probably just do this project. That way it's like, well, I have to get a new compressor to do this project. So I think that's a pro and a con. <laughs> um, well, worthwhile to note also, you can rent rent a, oh, yeah. uh, a, a larger air compressor if you don't have one. Yeah, most Home Depots and Lowe's and probably some other equipment rental places, uh, you can rent air compressors for pretty inexpensive. Uh, if you just want to rent one for uh, you know a few days or something, mm -hmm. so uh, our closest Home Depot and Lowe's is like two hours away, so we didn't really have that option. <laughs> so the next thing I like was uh, you can't be lazy with lizard skin, or it forces you to not be lazy. Um, you know, once you have everything taped off uh, and you have that expensive you know two gallon pail, um, it's pretty motivating to just use the whole pail and not be like ah that's good enough, it's fine. It's like well we've already got this taped off. I already had this pail sitting here. I'm already in this Tyvek suit with a respirator. Uh, let's just like do it once and do it right and keep it going. So I think that's kind of a pro with that. Whereas lizard skin, if you kind of get sidetracked, it's, it would be easy to just be like, oh, that's good enough. <laughs> My next con on this one is you can't drink beer while doing the project because of that respirator. Uh, it's just not feasible to not wear a respirator on this uh, project. And it's kind of like, it's a lot like work. Um, I think this is a lot more like work intensive, you know, it's loud, it's noisy, uh, it stinks uh, while it's being sprayed, much like just painting in general. Um, and you can't really just, it's not like a chill activity where you can drink some beers, pop on some good music and listen to that and have a conversation while you're doing the project. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a con there. Um, wait versus I meant, oh, those are the other things I had. Um, but I think, Oh, there was the others. I had them covered up. So in window issues, so in the front doors, we didn't spray any lizard skin up front because we really didn't have a good way to spray inside of the front doors without getting it on all of the like gears and the hardware that lets the, uh, the window slide up and down. So we'll actually probably go back through there with some kill mat in the future when we do probably like a upgrading speakers video or something like that and stick some of that on the front doors just because it was not feasible to try to mask everything up in the front doors that needed to be masked. So there was no uh, sound deadening up there for this those driving tests. Um, but as far as like lizard skin versus kill map performance benefits, like it's it's really impossible to tell. Like I think both of them are going to work just fine um, and probably really comparably, 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 I don't know, um, to each other, you know, that's, uh, they're, they're both going to work fine. They're both adding mass at the same rate to the body panels. Uh, I think the lizard skin is probably going to work better because we were able to get more full coverage. Um, you know, if you took the time to do absolute full coverage with a uh, kill mat or something like that, you know, that's probably going to work just as well too, but kind of have to weigh your, uh, Weigh your options and how much work you're willing to do on one versus the other. Um, you know, shy of like setting up two separate vans, doing one one way and the other the other way, it's pretty much impossible to test that. But I think either way, we're super happy with it. And this is not the last ins insulation thing that we're doing. We're going to be putting 3M Thinsulate or similar uh, once we get to the actual insulation part of it. And that's going to add even more uh, sound, uh, sound deadening, sound absorption as well as thermal heat, thermal absorption, or thermal insulation, sorry. 
to that. So um, once we get all that done, we anticipate the sound deadening and soundproofing to be even better. Any other thoughts? No, I think that about covers it. Perfect. Now, I know that we can tell a pretty big difference in person, and I hope that these comparisons did a good job of making it across to your side of the internet, because it's sometimes kind of hard to convey how big of a difference something makes when you can't hear it in person. But now that our testing on this product is all wrapped up, it's time to move on to the next step in this project, which is spraying the lizard skin ceramic insulation to help keep us cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And that's coming up next, so stay tuned. Now, we hope you found this video useful, and if you did, it would be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Leave any questions you've got or new things you learn in the comment section below. If this video inspired you to build something, please be sure to tag your projects with the Explore Life tag on Instagram so we can see your projects and share them. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and we will see you in the next video.